and Mr. Steve Rhodes as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does a show here every trading day. Now, Steve and Larry just swapped hours. Steve's on every trading day now, 11 to noon, and Larry is on 1 to 2. Uh, as you come over to our website at TFNN, Steve has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability, very easy to get. Come over, you hit newsletters. You're going to see it on the right-hand side. You can get it for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of 22% or $199. And you can get it for a year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money, money-back guarantee. When you get the letter, what you're also going to get is a huge amount of webinars to understand exactly how Steve looks at the market each and every day. So check it out, get over there, hit that button, and you are off to the races. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I'm going to have to be careful here, Tom, because I could plump up real quickly. You see, for the last many years, I haven't been able to go out to lunch with anybody. You know, doing a one o'clock show, as you know, yeah. you know, it's not like you can eat a half an hour before because right. they got that food kind of right. coming up, so to speak. So, yeah. so you know, now it's like, hey, I can actually go out to lunch with people. That, that is, so Steve's talking about folks, no yeah. doubt. And you've heard it with me sometimes. If I if I throw some peanuts in, like, you know, you know, half hour before I'm coming on or something, you're burping it, man. I mean, exactly. Exactly. So, I know. I know. Kind of like so. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, listen, that, that was a. I think it's a great swap too, man. I mean, it's, both years are going to do great, so it's it's awesome. Yeah, and, and good for Larry. You know, anything yeah. we do to help uh, uh, Larry out, that's a, that's a wonderful thing. So um, yeah. yeah. So so for me, just kind of getting adjusted to it. You know, I used to have all my doctor appointments in the morning. Now I'm calling them all and yeah. trying to get things switched and everything. But uh, cool. Hey, Tom. Yep. When we began 2022, yep. you and I, before 2022, we were on the air and we were taking a look at this specific chart right here that suggested caution. And now that caution, folks, uh, Tom had mentioned, uh, if you do subscribe to Mastering Probability, you're going to get access to many of the things that we're talking about. And what we were, what I was referring to with regard to why 2022 was a very cautious year was because of all the TD9 count patterns out there. Yes. So if we look at this chart, you can see that the uh, Dow has a TD9 count pattern. Now, with a TD9 count pattern, I can't go through the entire thing, folks, but basically my charts automate this system when you, in, in a top conform, when you see bars 8, 9, or the bar following nine. And in many of these instances, it was the bar following nine that was out there that that so far has identified the top. So that was the case with the Dow, the S&P, the Russell 2000, the semiconductors, the NASDAQ composite, and the New York Stock Exchange. So that was a reason to be cautious. And with regard to the newsletter, each morning subscribers receive, this is just one of many of the uh, tools that they receive, but here is an overview of the different patterns that I use to help us identify tops or bottoms in the marketplace. And this shows those by, and if you take a look at, you've got one column here, TD9 daily. So you've got the weekly counts, the daily counts, the monthly counts, part of the Chapman wave counts out there. You've got my roads, momentum indicator signal. So this helps for the all the sectors with inside the S&P 500, the index ETFs, the diamonds, the IWM, the Qs, and the spies nice. out there, yeah. the primary indices, you get the equity future contracts, you get the uh, metals, you've got oil, natural gas, bonds, you've got other commodities, and some of the popular ETFs out there. So that way in the morning, those folks that are managing either their portfolios or trying to identify new trades, it helps them to understand exactly where we are inside the market. And right now, we have many daily index that are suggesting that we could see tops this week. So the same thing that we saw on the yearly base with regard to TD9 counts, we're now starting to get that caution signal as we speak right now. So for example, the S&P 500 today will complete bar number nine. It is the high of this pattern. So this says that a top should form between today and tomorrow. The same pattern that we have, that's the same pattern that we have for the Russell 2000. So they, com they confirm their pattern today. But again, that high can come on the bar following bar number nine, just like we looked at on the yearly time frame charts. The NASDAQ 100, the semiconductor index, the NASDAQ composite, they're likely to form TD9 tops by Wednesday. So their top should form by or could form by Wednesday. You'll have to check back in, listen to the Trader's Ed show uh, tomorrow afternoon and then or tomorrow morning, I should say, and then on Wednesday morning uh, to get a confirmation or simply subscribe to the uh, newsletter out there. New York Stock Exchange, uh, that already has a TD9 count top and th that remains in effect unless price were to close above 15,354.73. The Dow 
and the Dow Transports. That would be the upper left-hand panel, folks, and the one uh, that's second from the left on the bottom. Neither of those, as you see, have the TD9 count pattern. So in order for them to generate a topping signal, what I'm looking for is some type of bearish reversal candle, and then that would confirm the sell the D point pattern, the A to B equals CD. So if we get all that, then we're going to have a market that's going to suggest that we've got at least a short-term top. Now, the initial downside price targets, Tom, will become these daily oscillator and change line. I have it as this list, OUL. Okay. Again, another tool that I teach folks out there. And that, when we take a look at the indices, because I don't have market profiles uh, to help me identify support or resistance, those become key target areas. When you do form a top, typically price or a bottom, price will typically find its way up to that level of support or resistance. In this case here, it would be support. And these become, these are green lines. When they change colors, I'm looking at the Dow right now in the upper left. When they change colors from red to green, that tells us that the price oscillator is now above zero. And the price oscillator, folks, is a difference between two things. The two things that I use are the 19 and 39 day exponential moving average. And oftentimes these levels act as support or resistance. So those become the first targets on the way to the uh, downside. The daily topping signals that we have are lining up with the weekly counter trend rally completion signals. You and I have talked about this. Yep. We've talked about how it looks like there should be a two to three week rally. If we take a look at the NDX 100, last week was week number three. That was the last rally that we had inside the NDX 100 also made a three bar rally. So everything is really lining up for at least a short term top. Now, what I'm not saying is that that's the end of the move out here. But if the daily oscillator and change line, we talked about that, does not hold a support, that happens to be this little kind of dash line on my chart out here. Then what price would do is pull back to the solid line. That is the weekly oscillator and change line. So with regard to indices, we'll watch those OULs out there. And we've also need to be observant of the of the market profiles for the equity futures. All this is covered inside the newsletter. I help identify where support levels are. If we take a look at the NQ right now, Tom, it's attempting to form a new daily profile. This is bearish in structure. This suggests that if we see a close below 13,128, I'm not sure where we're at right now, when you close below the center of a bear structured profile, you typically make your way down to the bottom of that, and that'd be at 12,740. Now, this profile won't be confirmed until this evening at 6.01. But I suspect that we're going to get this top, we're going to see a pullback, and that this is not the end of this, this is not the beginning of the next leg to the downside. Instead, what I anticipate is that we should get a two consecutive month rally, just like we did. This is a chart here that shows us the 2000 uh, bear market. What we saw were several two month and a couple of, and one a three month rally out there. I suspect that's what we're going to happen. And with regard to price targets out here, I'm looking at this descending trend line. This is the weekly chart for the Dow. And that is likely where price is going to find resistance. And that's going to be between about 34,000 to 34,152. But I don't want to get too hung up on the number. What I want to do is look at the pattern as price approaches that area. And folks, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. You just saw how extensive it is. And you can glance at that in the morning, folks, and really understand where everything is. So come over to our website at TFNN, hit newsletters, you hit Mastering Probabilities right on that right-hand side, hit it, and you are off to the races. Steve, you have a great one, safe one, and we look forward to the show at 11 tomorrow morning. Thanks, Tom. We'll see you <laughs> have soon. a great one, man. Bye.